like Hot Rod Ray writes, yee-haw, this worked out really, really well. Uh, up top is a Proform 950 CFM carburetor. The M1 has had some work done to it. I'll show you guys that. And I literally spent a day plus trying to gain some CSA in the TFS 270 CNC's. Uh, just because it's such a big engine at 540, it's going to be tough to feed it at the RPM the owner wants to feed it at. So I did what I could, and it's going to be what it's going to be. Uh, will it pull 6,500? I think it'll have no problem. Will it start to ease over around probably 64, 63, something like that? Yes, due to the air speeds, I think it will. But uh, if if it's a real street ride, it'll be basically no no traction between 3,000 and 6,000 RPM. I'm going to pause the phone. I'm going to take the intake off. I'm going to blow some dicum through for you guys so we can see what it looks like after we the CSA change. Hopefully this stays paused long enough. Okay, ready to, uh, I just got to clean that clay up a little bit more and ready to do dicum. Okay, off the bench, just got to disassemble it so you guys can see it. Okay guys, I remember last time I didn't spray enough dicum, so I definitely sprayed more this time. You can see we got some on the edge of that chamber. We've got a nice swath in the bowl on both sides of the guide. Uh, a little more around the plug than I'd like to see, but that's okay. Let's look right down its throat. We should note the little bit of splatter around by the exhaust valve with the dicum. Okay, now it may not be easy to see, but at this view you can see where we expanded the CSA. Sorry about my jiggling guys. Oof, the camera is all over the place. We are brought out about as far as I dare go without knocking through to the cylinder head bolt. Would we gain a few CFM if we did that? Yes. Do I want to do that without tubes on a street ride? Probably not. Drag racer, I have no problem blowing that through and leaving holes there. Um, The bowl and so forth really doesn't have that much of a different shape. And if you look really well, I forgot to go over the guide again. It's still completely stock, that guide. You can still see the CNC uh, marks on that guide. I, I still forgot about doing that. Okay, you can see on the valve, you got plenty on the stem. You can see just a little bit on the right side, and you got a lot of fuel on the left side which is just what the bull shows. Okay, not bad in the bore. Okay, at this point, we're pretty much done where we need to be. The exhaust really didn't get any more work, and I didn't reflow it because it flowed plenty. I mean, you can see where I touched up around that guide a little bit, but it's pretty much done, and I think it's more than enough exhaust to get us through. I was thinking of putting a radius on our exhaust valve, and the owner said, I think that's a good idea, and we're getting an extra exhaust valve just to test with. We are also getting extra intake valves. This, has, this was tested this time exactly the same as it was tested last time, without a back cut, because I wanted to see if the CSA made a difference. And I figured it would. I mean, I didn't think it would gain much. I figured it would gain maybe a few CFM, but I figured it would change the swirl considerably because of the entire port is shaped a little bit differently now. Okay, well that could be a problem if you have something that's as nice as a, a TFS 270 and you're going to go in there and make some changes. You can cause some problems. Uh, overall, I think it worked out really well. If I really, really wanted to be a, a lunatic, I think I would change 
a little bit on the short side, but if you guys see the airspeed, you let me know if I need to do that or not, or we're gonna let this uh, we're gonna let this cook just the way it is. Okay, on the right we've got first cut. On the left we've got second cut. M C S A. Let's put some pluses and minuses in. Okay, guys, these pluses and minuses are in reference to these numbers. How do we do? Minus, plus, minus, 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 plus, 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 plus. Not many pluses. Now, remember, this is without a back cut. The only thing I changed was the CSA of the port. All right, we top out a little better. 366 is not bad, uh, considering the size of the port. The port is bigger. It's... Uh, it CC'd 269 and change. When uh, Rob CC'd it, it's definitely bigger than that now. I took out quite a bit of metal. And like I said, it was a full day just trying to find CSA. The only thing I want to, that I know for sure I want to try is several different back cuts. I'd like to see this quite a bit better than 208 at 300. And... Um, FYI, I, I just felt like looking up AFR 325 CNC big block Chevy heads. They're right around this. They are better in here, but they're, they are using a back cut valve. Now, do I expect to lose a tiny bit up here with a back cut? Possibly. We will find out. Let's go over our swirls. Okay, the swirls are interesting. Would I have expected it to go in that direction? Yes. Because the CSA expansion was all done on this side of the port, all the way to the, the valve, uh, the valve phase, the manifold phase. Okay? Couldn't do any more on the pushrod side. Pushed my luck, and that's it. We're done with that side. Did I take some out of the roof? You bet. Now, it's really funny. The Sonic was, was showing me spots that should definitely be solid. Not solid. Am I going to take a chance on a head this expensive? Nope. So, that's, where, that's why we have the CSA we have. Do we have a good curve? If we go 600 plus, 700 and lift, we've got more than enough swirl. We have a nice progression. I think it's going to be work out just fine. Okay, might as well go over the airflows. This is our first cut airflows. Pretty high everywhere, right? These are our new airflows. Our pinch is screaming. I wish I could make it bigger. I can't without taking a risk. Now, if uh, Dangerous Donnie says, go for it, and we have to weld them later, we might do that, but I don't think there's... In reality, I don't think we're going to gain that much. Okay? How do we do as far as the roof? We did good on both sides. We gained speed. Meaning that we're using it more efficiently. Okay, how do we do on the short side? Well, we're faster than I'd like. But... It's working pretty good. It's working pretty good. And... Uh, it sounds pretty good on the bench. The only thing we had an issue was we had a bit of separation right at 300. Wasn't really happy at 300. Okay, these numbers were taken at 750 lift, and I'm sure I did the same thing with the old numbers because I figure that's as, the most amount we're going to get. Okay, now for the really part, the part everyone's going to really, really cry about. What happens when you take a head like this and bolt on an intake? Well, these numbers here is just the intake with some clay around it. I'm going to put pluses and minuses in reference to this. Okay, we've got one plus, we've got one equals, the rest is minus. Take a look at how well it did, though. We went from 366 to 345 with an intake manifold. That's excellent. At 300, our noise was gone, and we only lost a couple CFM. These are almost dead even. Almost no losses at all until we're moving 300 plus CFM. 
and that's when we start to feel a little bit of restriction. Now, there is something I need to show you guys on the intake manifold. And uh, I'm going to put you on pause so I can show you. Okay, I'm just going to show these, but as you can tell, I mean, I don't know if you guys can see the lines, but the, the whole manifold is offset cast, whereas notice I didn't hit this wall with a burr. I barely hit this wall with a burr because the casting is cast over to the right a little bit too far. Okay? Now, instead of goofing it all up, the final gasket match is going to be done by just Mopar Joe. You can see how much smaller these are than the gasket line. Okay. Now, the gaskets are... I don't know if they're really what they mean they need to be. But when I lined it up on the bench, they're pretty close. I.e., this side was fairly close to lining up, and this side was probably a little bit small for our testing, which I'm fine with. Okay, we did pretty well. We did... I don't know what we got on this. Hold on. Okay, so how did we do? We got 345 at 700 through the intake manifold pretty damn good. How do we do as far as our swirl? Well, it's going to change because you're adding on to the intake port and it has a shape to it. So it's going to change your swirl a little bit. Let's do some pluses and minuses. Okay, we've got minuses all along our swirl curve. As long as we're over 700, uh, 1700, where we're going to lift it, we're pretty close. Okay, I'm good with that. So what do we do at that point? I can't get air speeds because I have an intake manifold on. Okay. What do you do next? You bolt on the 950 carb. Now I'm going to put pluses and minuses on these columns in reference to the bare manifold. Okay. Check out how we did with the carb bolted to the manifold to through the head. Through the head, through the intake manifold with a carburetor. This is what the engine's really going to see, okay? Plus, plus, equals, minus, minus, minus. Obviously, the, the more air you start pulling through, the more of a restriction everything becomes. But still, if you look at 500, we're flowing over 300 CFM through that entire system, okay? That'll make some serious power for your street. What happened as far as our swirl curve? Well, we got a couple pluses and a couple minuses. Is it still a usable curve? It's a little bit low, which would be absolutely joyous to certain drag race guys. Uh, as far as me on the street, I think we have more than enough. We've got a big engine. They're going to build it with some quench in it. I think it'll be, it'll be just fine. In fact, I think this thing is going to be a really sweet running setup. If you don't agree, I think you need to put that in the comments. Let me know how many different ways I goof this up. Because I think this is an absolute banging uh, project. And uh, actually, one of the reasons I was chasing a minimum cross-sectional area was a short conversation with da Daniel Powell. And he's like, yeah, that's one of the problems with Chryslers. They won't, they won't be able to compete with a Chevy and I don't have the experience to say oh yeah definitely the Chevys do better it's like a blank spot I don't know so that is in the back of my mind while I was looking for CSA after I did my computations of where he wants his RPM range to be and we're shy well I got what I could anything else is very risky and I'm not willing to do that without some approval. All right, guys. Sunday night. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.